this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. I, I wish I was in Hawaii. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on. Let me get situated here. Take my rubber band off my Bible cover. Amen. Praise God. How many know God is good? Amen. How many believe God is good? Yes. Come on. How many live in the goodness of God? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man, that was weak. Man, that was weak. You guys, you guys clap louder for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Man, Jesus, help us this morning. Amen. God is, God is a good God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm just so blessed to be here this morning. Amen. Um, you know, I, I had put a, or I got a call this morning, amen, from Brother Vince. Um, so I do just want to acknowledge him, amen. He had a, a procedure on um, Friday, um, and they had to put a stint in him. Um, they had to put a, like a vein connector in there because his veins aren't, aren't really working real well. Uh, he told me that it was supposed to be like a, you know, 45-minute procedure that took much longer. He's in a lot of pain, amen. So, um just lift him up in prayer, amen. amen. Um, lift up his family, amen. Just, you know, ask God to help him, amen, as he endeavors and endures through this situation. Um, and that God will give him favor, amen. Uh, so praise God. I, I'm blessed to be here. Just want to welcome you all, amen, those that are out there in Cyberland. And I can't tell you all them apps. There's just too many of them for me. We had Bible study at my house on Friday with Pastor Alfonso's uh, Bible study. And um, they were making fun of me, you know. <laughs> They wanted to use my TV. They say, ain't that a smart TV? I say, yeah, that's a smart TV. He says, well, we want to hook up um, the uh, uh, YouTube on there to play their songs, right? And they say, well, what's your password? I said, what do you mean, what password? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, they expect me to know that stuff, right? I, I know that stuff. I called my daughter, amen, and she said, well, you know the password. And finally, I found the password, and they got it taken care of. I told them it was his fault. Amen, Pastor Alfonso, because if he would have got there early enough, he would have set it all up. Amen. That's called being organized. Amen. It, right? Amen. So I just want to clarify that right now. Amen. But, uh, you know, God is good. Amen. So I want to uh, minister what the Lord has put in my heart this morning. Amen. But I want to give God all the glory first. Amen. And just thank him for my salvations and the blessings upon my family, my home, and my children. Amen. Because I mean, you know, God is good like that. You know, God is good like that, amen. You know, I, I, um, God, God wants to bless and he wants to pour out blessings, amen. Sometimes it's us, amen, that don't want to receive them blessings, amen. So I, I just want to thank God for that. I want to thank God for allowing me to, the privilege of ministering this morning because it uh, is a great privilege to be able to be the voice of God. Come on, amen. Right. It's a great privilege, right. amen. And you know what? I've really realized this. Um, it's not just standing behind this pulpit that we should be the voice of God. Come on, amen. It should be in every day, every conversation that we have with individuals that we're the voice of God, amen. That we're the voice of reason allowing God to speak through us this morning. So, you know, with that being said, tomorrow's President's Day. And I just wanted to also take a, a moment to acknowledge, amen, the, the presidents of, of our nation, especially uh, those uh, uh, um, in the past, amen, in the beginning, if you must, because they were, they were a different breed of men, amen. You know, um, George Washington, our first president, he said this, he said, it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God in the Bible. John Adams, the second president, amen. He said, we recognize no sovereignty but God and no king but Jesus. How many know these were men of God, amen, that were God used to help create this nation, amen. R Ronald Reagan, amen, the 40th president, he says, is, if we ever forget that we are one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under, amen. H how many know these were men of God that have been rooted, men they were rooted in the will of God. They, they were used by God to be voices in creating this nation. And how many know I was thinking about that as I was preparing for this message? And I, and I started thinking, amen, how, how much more we as a church, as men and women of God, that we should be those people, amen, that are that are, that are, are want to express the goodness of God in our lives, amen. Because we live in a country, amen, where we have the freedom to express and to live our faith, amen, because of men such as these men in the past. They, just as the men in the Bible, just as the word of God, amen, has given us the foundation, Christ on the cross, has given us that foundation, amen, that we should be the man, the woman of God, uh, to express, to be that voice, amen, uh, wherever God would take us, John 114, Jesus came, says, says this, Jesus came to this earth full of grace and truth, John 
14, 6, Jesus said to, to him, amen, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm, I am the life. And no one comes through the Father except through me. How many know Jesus, amen? He was taking the opportunity at that moment with his disciples, just as he is now with us, amen, with his word and through the spirit of God, amen. He was giving us, amen, a, 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 a blueprint or a, or, or, or a path, amen, instructions, amen, of how we should be living our life. Come on this morning, amen. And the, the more that I, I'm in God's word, the more that I'm in prayer, amen, the more that God allows me the breath of life to have longevity, to be a life on this earth, amen, and to be in his presence, I realize more and more, amen, the importance, amen, uh, of, of following the instructions of God in my life, amen, of walking the path that he has called me to walk. Come on this morning, amen. He's given us a blueprint, amen. That's you and I, amen. It's not something you have to be something special to have a blueprint from God. God, amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Amen. Come on. He is the way of salvation. He said, follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. Amen. But how many know that entails something? Amen. It entails that you and I are willing to be obedient and willing to sacrifice ourselves. Amen. For the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen this morning? See, we got to be a people just like the presidents of old. Amen. That were willing to establish a nation. Amen. Under the mighty hand and through the word of God. They were really to lay a foundation and to build upon that foundation. The Bible tells us Christ Jesus is our foundation. Can I get an amen this morning? He is our cornerstone. He holds all things together. Amen. So this morning, amen, God, I want to minister to you, amen, uh, out of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14, 4, 14 through 16, amen, and I've titled this, amen, The Little Things. And before I read the scripture, David, over here on my left, amen, will you stand and just open up, open us up in prayer? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come before you this morning, Father yes, God. Please. We thank you for everything you've done all our life, Father God. God. I pray for Pastor Johnny as he ministers the word, Father God. I pray that you use him, Father God, to touch us, Father God. And help us, Father, with the struggles that we go through in our life, Father God. Feed us this morning, Father God. Yes. Feed us our breakfast that we need yes. this morning, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Father God, thank amen. you, Lord. I had to look at that sign because Brother Will had a different one up there this morning. He was showing me back there. Amen. He thinks he's a jokester back there. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. It says this. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Amen. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but, we, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Verse 16, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Amen. How many of those are some powerful words given to us, amen, by the apostle, amen. I, I love what it says in verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. How many ever felt weak in serving God here, amen. How many of you ever felt weak, amen, when you're coming across a struggle or a hardship, amen? Or how many of you ever felt weak when God pours out blessings on you? You, you just can't, can't, can't comprehend why God is so good to you, amen? You just feel that humbleness, amen, that weakness that, in a sense, amen, of why God would, would bless you and love you so much, amen? Come on, amen. Uh, I, I love that verse. He says, amen, that, 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 that we have, he sympathizes with us, amen. He knows our weaknesses. Why? Because he walked this earth. Earth, amen. And he, he felt the temptation, even though he didn't sin because he was God, amen. But he felt the, the pull, the struggle, the hardship. Come on, amen. And how many know that life is not easy? Come on, amen. How many know our Christianity is not easy because you're saved, amen? And it doesn't mean you're going to get to walk, amen, through the, through the garden of tulips, amen, and roses, and everything smells great, and everything goes, goes correct, amen, and every day you're just going to have a, a perfect life, amen, uh, no, no, no trials, no troubles, because when you believe that, you're believing the lie of the devil, because it's opposite of what the Word of God says. The Bible says that we will have temptations, amen, that we will have hardships, come on this morning, that we... That we have an enemy that's going to come against us. Can I get an amen? amen. 
Smith Wigglesworth, amen, one of, one of the heroes of faith, amen. I love reading his, his books, amen, of the, that he wrote when he was walking this earth. But he said this, believe that when you come into the presence of God, you can have all you came for, amen. It's like, it's like amen, understanding that. I mean, he's saying that it's like when you go to a, a, a buffet to eat, amen. You know, you, you go in there and you can stuff yourself, amen, until, you're, until, until it's coming out your ears. Come on, amen. He says that hey, when you believe, when you come into the presence of God, you can have all you came for. You can take it away and you can use it for all the power of God is at your disposal in response to your faith. Come on this morning. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful statement, the man of God. Amen. You could take it away. You could have all of God and you could take it away. Amen. And you could you could use it and you could walk in the power of God. He says, it's all at your and my disposal. Amen. So I stop and I think of that in walking and serving God, amen, and in my daily life. And when I, when, I, when I face the hardships and the trials, the good times, the bad times, amen, God has given me everything I need for every situation at every moment and every second of every single day. Come on this morning. You gotta grab hold of that in your lives, amen, as you, as you do this thing called Christianity, amen, as you, as you walk, amen, in this world. How many know salvation in itself, amen, is, is, is God taking us and allowing us to be cleansed of our sins? Come on this morning, amen, and, and being washed. And, and we know the word of God says salvation is just a, the jumping off point, if you must, amen, because then we need to learn to walk in Christ and build that relationship with God. It's a powerful statement. You can take it away and, and you can use it for all the power of God. It's at your disposal. And so what does that mean to you and I, Eamon? It means that every, each and every one of us, each and every man of God. Do I have any men and women of God here this morning? No. Come on, anybody here that is saved and sanctified and delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, amen. Men, men of God, amen, and women of God that are willing to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, to, to lift up the banner on high and say, yes, Lord, I'm here, amen. amen. Come on, amen. You have to have that within your spirits this morning, amen. But you got to recognize, amen, that, that who you are in Christ Jesus. Every man and every woman needs to make that decision in their life that they're going to walk by faith, that they're going to walk by the Spirit, amen, that they're, gonna, uh, that they're not going to listen to the flesh this morning. Oh, you don't like that, huh? Uh, it's, it sounds good when we're walking in the Spirit, right, and walking in faith, right? When you're that mighty warrior in Christ Jesus. I got my sword. <laughs> Oh, as Pastor Billy would say, amen. Uh, but how many know the reality, amen, if you're really a man or woman of God, you're going to have battles with the flesh. Because the Bible says, amen, that the spirit man, man warreth against the flesh man. So if your spirit isn't warring against the flesh, that means you're probably not walking in the spirit. You're probably walking in the flesh because it's easy. And you're, not having to, you're not having to make the decisions that proclaim Christ in your life. See, it's easy, amen, when you want to dibble-dabble, oh. you know, just a little bit, yes. amen. See, I titled this this morning, amen, The Little Things, The Little Things. But how many know that every man and woman need to make that decision in their life? We know in the book of Acts chapter 9, Paul, amen, uh, he had to make that Decision. He was on that road to Damascus, amen. He had an encounter with God. Just as much as like when we came to the altar with Christ. We came to the altar and we had an encounter with God. Come on, amen. Where he brought our lives in, in, in front of us and we looked at him, amen, and we realized, amen, how deprived we were in the things that we did in the way that we were, amen, and we, and we cried out to God and we asked for forgiveness and we have a gracious God that just reached out and wrapped his arms around us and, and, and showered us with love and attention, amen, and said, you're my son, you're my daughter, amen, I, I, I'll care for you, I'll keep you, I'll wash you this morning, amen. Paul, so Paul was the same, he, on the road to Damascus, amen, in verse 6 of 9, Chapter 9, he says, so he trembled. I'm astonished. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. Uh, uh, he said, who, who is, is that you, Lord, talking to me? Amen. And how many of we know when you read Paul's story in his life, there was a tremendous change or transformation from that moment forth. 
So when we look in the mirror, can we say to ourselves, God, from that moment forth of salvation, we're having that great change and that great transformation in our lives. Proverbs 3.21 says this, my child, how many children of God here this morning? It says, my child, don't lose sight of common sins and discernment. Hang on to them. Amen. So what does that mean, amen? That means in our transformations, in our change, in our walk with God, as Jesus says, he sympathizes with our weaknesses. He sympathizes with our brokenness. He sympathizes with our hurting, amen. He still is giving us all the tools, amen. He's giving us all the necessities we need through the word of God and by his presence of his spirit in our lives, amen, to be who he has called us to be. Come on, amen. Paul had to make that statement. Who is it? Is, it, is that you, Lord? Jesus, are you talking to me? <laughs> me, me, the sinner, me, the killer. Woo! Come on, amen. Are you, you talking to me, Jesus? Amen. See, we can't lose sight, amen. Scripture says we can't lose sight and of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, amen. That literally means, amen, that we need to. Not only learn God's word and learn to apply it to our lives, amen. We have to make them decisions in our every day lives, in our actions, amen. That we're going to discern God, discern the world of God. So what does that word discern really mean, amen? Discerning God's word is like, is like having a filter, amen, in our lives. Everything we do should filter through the word of God. Come on, amen. It should filter through. We should allow that filter to sift out the junk, amen, and to and not only allow the good stuff to come into our hearts and into our minds and into our actions this morning. Come on, amen. It has to be filtered, amen. A filter is a, literally a device for moving impurities. Hmm. Oh, my. Oh, my. Anybody have any impurities in their lives? Now, I see all your halos, but some of your lights are not on. Come on, amen. Sometimes when you look in the mirror, amen, do you see your own halo? And then you look and say, the light's not on? Mm. Help me, Lord. Yeah. Our actions, our decisions, everything that we're about, amen. Everything that we are, amen, everything that we say should be filtered through what the word of God and what he has told us. Our, 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 our body, our minds, the body, Bible says that our bodies, that our lives, amen, uh, everything about us, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on this morning, amen. How many know we should be the reflection of that in our lives? So here this morning, church with me, what the spirit of God is saying. Just as a mustard seed of faith goes into a big old bush shoot, church, the little things that keep our halos turned off will hinder us and stop us from being that man and woman, from being that voice, and from being that witness for Jesus Christ. The little things, church, the little things will hinder our lives, amen, and stop us, amen, from being fruitful in the kingdom of God, from growing, from being into those warriors, amen, that God has called you and I to be. Come on this morning. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Songs of Solomon, amen, uh, chapter 2, one small verse there, verse 15. I'm going to read it to you out of the New American Standard, amen. It says this, it says, catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that are running, ruining the vineyards while the vineyards are in blossom. Come on this morning. We under, first of all, amen, understand with me this morning that the book of Song of Solomon's, amen, is a representation, if you must, of God speaking to his church as the bride of Christ. Come on this morning, amen. It's a love story, amen. Uh, it, it, it's an, a, a letter of endearment, if you must, amen, that God is, is speaking and caring for, for the children of Israel, amen, as, as Christ, amen, speaks to the church. How many know we are the bride of Christ? Come on, amen. I see some of you guys out there, amen. Some of you men, I'm going to mess with you guys this morning. I see you in your white gowns. Ooh, come on this morning. Come on this morning, amen. Wearing your little, I see you, Philip, with your white gown. Amen. Your little halo this morning. 
But I understand the, the book of Song of Solomon or Song of Solomon is a representative of Christ, a representative of Christ speaking uh, uh, to the bride, amen, which we are, the church. It's a love letter, amen. I, I love this verse. In the King James, it says this, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoils the vine, amen. And what we got to understand here, amen, is Jesus is speaking. He's bringing to attention that it could be the little things in our lives that hinder, amen, the fruitfulness and the growth of Christ in our life, amen. And what hinder us from walking in faith, amen, believing and being those vessels of gold that God has called us to be, amen. Uh, in the King James where it says, take us to foxes, that word take literally means this. It's a Hebrew word that is a cause, amen, or something real close to that, a cause. What it means is that to seize or to, to lay hold of something, amen. So what it's saying, take us to foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vine. Well, literally what it's saying is God is bringing to the attention of his church, to his bride, amen. Get rid of the little things in your life, the junk, amen, that is messing up our relationship. Oh, come on, amen. That is keeping us from shining, amen, for him. Come on this morning, amen. From keeping us from being them bright lights, if you must. Come on, amen. God is saying, get, get hold of or seize those little things, amen, that will stop you, that will slow you down, will hinder, amen, the harvest or the growth or the fruitfulness in your life, amen. So hear what the hear Holy Spirit is saying this morning. Before, amen, that we fall on our faces, God is bringing to our attention, amen, those little foxes, those little things, amen, that mess with us, that stop us, amen. You know, those things that keep us, amen, from be, having a, a, a prayer life, amen, where we truly get in the presence of God. Amen. Because the yabba yabba duba duba praise is good at times, amen, for God. But how many know that God literally wants us to get into his presence? He wants us to, to be so much in his presence that we're like the, the lady with the issue of blood, amen, that we, we reach, reach out and touch him. And, and he says, who touched me, amen? I, I feel something coming out of me into a heart that's so open to my presence in, my, in their lives. To a heart that, that wants the spirit, my spirit, my presence to, to mold them and shape them and direct them. Come on this morning. There's someone that wants to uh, uh, help me to help them put on the armor of God, the full armor of God to stand and to be the warriors, amen, that I've called them to be, amen. They're vessels, they're mouthpieces this morning. See, it's not the... Normally, the big giant things that mess us up. Because how many know when you run into a big failure, and, and, and usually, amen, for most Christians, when they run into that big failure, they'll repent immediately. Because it's so blaring, amen, you know? It's like just getting punched in the face. Blah! You know, you recognize, oh, oh, I got sucked. The devil socked me, man. He knocked me, he knocked me down to my knees, amen. I better stay here for a little bit and repent and get, get right with God. Come on, amen. But how many of those little things, you know, the little rocks you pick up and you put it in this side and you put it in that side and you walk around with them and you keep them and you rub your pocket. I like that little rock. I don't know, a couple, one of the times we were at Knoxbury Farm, my daughter decided she wanted to collect rocks. So she, she stood there, man, I ain't kidding. It was like 45 minutes looking at rocks. They all looked, rubbing them, wanting the smooth ones and shiny ones. How many know that the Bible says, amen, that we need to watch out for the fox, the little foxes. Now, foxes, amen, you know, they're not really dangerous animals. You know, they're really not, amen. They're not like a wolf or something, amen. You know, they're not. But how many know that foxes, amen, that they can destroy a vineyard? You know, they're little creatures. And I looked them up. They say they're small, only a... Normal size is about 20 inches, about 8 pounds. You know, they, you sort of look at them, they sort of have that cute little face, amen, you know? But Scripture says that we should beware of the foxes. And the reason, amen, in Israel at the time, amen, these little foxes, we know that the vineyards, amen, and the olive groves of the, uh, there that they had in Jerusalem and stuff, amen, the foxes when, would come into these vineyards, amen, and they would want to eat the, the fruit off of the, the, the vine there, amen. They would eat and gnaw at the, at the roots, amen, and destroy the plant, amen. 
And how many know that we have to recognize, amen, that yeah. the little things in our lives, amen, that 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 will mess us up because they gnaw at our at our at our Christianity, they oh. they gnaw at the spirit in our lives, amen. Oh, yeah. They 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 hinder the fruit, amen, and the the fruits of the spirit that God speaks about, the love, joy, and peace, and the goodness, and in the kingdom of God, amen. The fruits that develop kindness and caring. Come on, amen. A willingness to serve and to be a servant in the kingdom of God. A willing to to want to reach out. And to, and to love somebody if you must, amen. It's the little foxes in our lives that are eating away at the fruit, amen. And we need to recognize, ooh, I don't know what happened to my spirit. There it is. Sort of like disappeared like Casper for a second. Here, amen. But it's the little things, amen, that, that'll mess us up, amen. It's the little things that, that'll hinder us and, 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 and keep us from, from being who God wants us to be this morning, amen. It's the little foxes, amen. You've got to realize that there's an enemy in our life that is trying to hinder us, our growth, amen. Come on, amen. He doesn't always come and sock you in the face, even though he says, amen, that he, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, amen. He wants to ruin you and I. He wants to keep us from us cheating the purposes and the callings and, the, and living in the anointing that God has called us to live in. Come on this morning. Amen. See, many times you might ask yourself, if you're honest with yourself, and how many know that if you're going to grow in the kingdom of God, if you're going to be a fruitful Christian, I mean, you need to learn to be honest with yourself. Right. You know why you need to learn to be honest with yourself? Say, why, Pastor? You guys are... Because everybody else already knows. Everybody else already recognizes, amen, all the little things in your life, amen, that aren't right with God. It's us that are the last at times to want to acknowledge them. Come on, amen. Because we want to pretend like they're not there. Even though we could feel them rocks in our pockets, come on, amen. We want to act like they're not there, amen. You know, uh, uh, we, we want to pretend that we're okay, amen, that God understands that he knows our heart. Come on this morning, amen. He knows that you really want to serve him. It's just because, amen. You know, all them just because is in our lives. Many times you might ask yourself, why am I not growing? Why am I not experiencing the, the fullness of, uh, of God's blessings? Why, why am I not walking in the joy of the Lord? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Why, why does it seem like it's always so difficult and so hard? Why, why can't I feel the, the joy? Why can't I feel the strength of God in my life? Maybe it's the little foxes. Maybe it's those little things, amen, that you're not willing to deal with, amen, or that the, you, you, they, they're sort of cute little sins, amen. You know, in all my life in dealing with men and women of God and, and the Christianity, the, and amen, and counseling Christians, and I've never known one man or woman of God that have come to me, amen, and, and said, you know what, Pastor, I woke up yesterday and I just said that I'm going to just throw God out the window, I'm going to backslide, amen. Uh, it doesn't happen that way, Amen. Not one man or woman of God's ever come to me and said, you know, Pastor, I woke up and I just decided I don't believe in Jesus no more. When someone backslides, amen, when they're, when they're broken and they're hurting and they fall away from God and when they start getting honest with themselves and you're ministering to them and loving them and, and helping them to come back into, into the presence of God, amen, it always comes out that it's these little things in their lives that they let build up, amen, and tell them it got so heavy that it pulled them down. Come on, amen, because they weren't willing to acknowledge it in their lives. Come on this morning. It's always the little things that hinder and diminish the harvest and the fruitfulness in our lives. The little attitudes and negativities that we ignore. How, how about the, it was only a little white lie. Hmm, no, it was a lie. Come on this morning. Just a little white lie. It, it wasn't bad. How about I don't really gossip, Pastor. You know, I don't tell them the whole story. I only give them a little bit of the story. Hmm. Or I don't get, really get drunk. I just sort of take a few, few zips. I'm not a puff daddy no more. I, I, don't, I don't really inhale. I just bring it to my lips. Well, it is a nerve, Pastor. Help me, Jesus. 
Help me, Jesus. Come on, amen. Hmm. Cute little sins, aren't they? Cute little sins. We wear them, and we wear them sometimes proudly. I don't get drunk. Bible says that we shouldn't be drunkers. Doesn't say we can't be wine tasters. I mean, literally, amen, these are areas in our life where we haven't allowed God and the Spirit of God and the Word of God to deal with our character. Mm. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew for a second, chapter 17, and uh, maybe I'll just read a little bit of this and paraphrase most of it. But it says this in Matthew 17, starting in verse 24, it says, when they had come to Caprina, that's the disciples of Jesus, those who received the temple, temple taxes came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? And he says, yes. And when he come into the house, Jesus anticipating him says, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the king of the earth take custom of their taxes from their sons or from the strangers? And Peter said to him, from strangers. And Jesus said to him, then, then the sons are set free. So why, why am I using this scripture? Why has God given me this scripture this morning and talking about the little foxes and maybe the characteristics in our lives that we don't allow the spirit of God and the word of God to deal with? For this reason, because Jesus, amen, when he spoke to Peter, he called him, amen. He says, Jesus says, Simon, amen. He didn't call him Peter. He called him Simon, amen. The reason he called him Simon, because in the story, you realize something, amen. When, they, when Simon or Peter was asked if he paid the taxes, they had not paid the taxes. He was lying. He was lying. And he read the whole story out because later on, Jesus told him to go what? Go look for the fish, take the coins out, and go pay the taxes. It's a little characteristic flaws in our life, church, that will hinder us and bring us down the little foxes that are gnawing at our, our ankles or at the fruit from growing and developing in our lives. Amen. Jesus called him Simon, referring to his own nature. Why? Because he lied. Amen. He, he, he didn't think it was a big deal thing, amen, to, to, to throw that little lie out there. Because you know what Simon literally means? It means shifter, amen. Shifter, amen. Shifter refers to someone who is undependable, unstable, and uncommitted. Come on this morning, amen. Someone who starts out good, amen, but, but fails, amen, to complete the task this morning. Or completes the task half-heartedly. Oh, my. And Jesus says he spools out, Amen. Come on, amen. He spools out the half-heartedness, the lukewarmness. Come on this morning, amen. See, I love the word of God because it keeps me straight. Come on this morning, amen. It keeps me straight, amen. But a, sh a shifter is someone who's unstable, shaky, amen. That, that's someone in Christianity, amen, who, who, who at times they're, they're, they're praising God, amen, and times, amen, they're just acting like a fool, amen. Help me, Jesus. You say, well, that ain't me. I don't act like a fool. Come on, amen. It's your story. You tell it. In Matthew 16, amen, we find out, amen, where Peter, amen, where, where Jesus changed Peter's name, or he called him Peter, amen. And he says, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate, gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. You know why, amen? Because Peter it literally remains to, to a rock or something that's solid, something that's dependable, something that's stable, and something that's committed. Come on, amen. And how many know when, G when, when Jesus confronted Peter, amen, or called him Simon because he lied, amen, God was bringing him back to the place, amen. He wanted him to recognize, amen, that it was the little things in his life that would hinder him from being who God had called him to be this morning. Come on, amen. How, how many know that we need to grab hold of that, amen? We have, to, we have to understand that. We have to acknowledge that in our lives, amen, because the little foxes, they'll hinder, amen, they'll, they'll diminish the harvest, amen, they will ruin the fruitfulness in our lives. They will spoil on the vine this yes. morning. Yes. Reality is this, amen, that the little things in our life, they're still sin. Yes. And I know we don't like that word sin. Oh, pastor, why you got to talk about sin? Why can't you just bless us, bless us, bless us? Because when you're willing to acknowledge the sin in your life, is that when God can move in your life. 
He moved in our life when we acknowledged it in salvation, didn't he? Come on, amen. We cried out to him, amen, in our brokenness, in our ugliness, amen, as a mud duck, amen, as in all our filth, amen. And he, and, he, and he forgave us and he loved us this morning, amen. And the Bible teaches us, amen, and it's in our, in our, when we're in our sin is when we repent and confess, amen, right. that he keeps us strong and he, and, and he keeps us whole, amen, and he keeps us on course, amen. It's literally, you can look at it, amen, as like the fertilizer that's going to keep the vine strong and healthy, producing good fruits this morning, amen. We should not ever be afraid, amen, of the word of God and, and how the word of God teaches us and to apply it to our lives this morning. Sin, church, devalues our testimony in the kingdom of God. Come on this morning. It hinders our growth. It stops us from being the new creation that God has called us to be. See, it's easy to be the old man. Come on, amen. I could be the old man in a snap of a hot second. Come on, amen. Uh, it's easy, amen, if I don't reel myself back in quickly, amen. I recognize that. I know that, amen. It doesn't take much, amen, if I allow the devil to mess with me and just get me, amen, to act that fool, amen. You know how it is, amen, that you want to prove that you're right, that you got to have the last word. Come on, amen, that you're going to demand something be changed. Sin devalues our testimony. The Bible says, amen, that we will be overcome by what? By the blood of the Lamb and by our testimonies, our change testimonies. Come on this morning, amen. So we've got to learn to thank God for his grace in our lives. So I love this text in Hebrews 4.15. Let me read it to you from the Amplified Bible now. It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and our temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. Hmm. And we know that Jesus demonstrated that to Matthew chapter 4. Come on, amen. We understand that. He faced it, amen. He, he recognized it, amen. And he called upon the Father and the Word of God in his life and allowed the Spirit of God to lead him and to direct him, amen. Jesus understands temptation. He experienced it, amen. But how many know, amen, he would not submit to it. Come on. And we can say, well, he was God, amen. Well, how many know that we have God in us? That's the Holy Spirit. Come on, amen. We have no excuse, amen. We can't say, oh, well, you know, it was Jesus, amen. He's the son of God, amen. He was able to overcome. Well, we're men and women, we're children, amen, of God, amen. We have the presence of God in our lives by the Spirit. He gives us his manna, the opportunity to eat at the buffet, amen, daily of his word, amen, growing closer and closer, being full with the nourishment, amen, that strengthens us, amen, that enlightens our minds this morning, amen, that we would walk and be who he has called us to be this morning so how do we resist let me bring this down amen let me bring this down how do we resist how do we keep that those little rocks those little foxes from gnawing away at our lives how do, how do, how do we keep it back church John 14, 6 again, Jesus said to him, I am the way and I am the truth and the life. What does that really mean to you? What should it really mean to us? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Sounds good how most of us can repeat that, amen, and recite that easily. I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Jesus was giving his disciples the blueprint. He was giving them the path and he was giving them the instruction, church. The blueprint, amen, how to stay close and how to build a relationship. Because it's all about your and my relationship with our Lord and Savior. Come on this morning, amen. You want to stay strong? Build that relationship. Stay in his presence. Come on this morning, amen. There ain't no secret sauce here, church. Come on, amen. There ain't no secret sauce. Come on, amen. It's being in his presence, amen. Being attentive to his word, Amen. You know, the, the, the hard part is this, amen, is that we grow up, we grow up and we have gr grown up, amen, just as, even more so for our kids and for you parents, you need to listen to this, where we had distractions, amen, and we're not attentive. That was the problem for many of us in school, right? We weren't attentive to what we were being taught. Our children today, amen, have so much 
so many things is that are, are are pulling them for the, their attention this way and that way and this way and that way with the internet and everything so fast. Studies have been shown now kids could go into school four or five years old and be ahead of the game if you must because they're learning from their all this uh, 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 stuff on the internet, all these learning tools. I mean, the problem is this: usually by a year later they're starting to fall behind. Why? It's because they lose interest. Amen. Because the teacher cannot move and it's not creative enough for what their minds are used to seeing. Come on, amen. So we have to learn, amen, to, 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 to be attentive to the things of God in our life. Come on. We need to be attentive to the details, amen. He is the truth, he is the way, and he is the life, amen. Come on, amen. It has to mean something to you and I this morning. Jesus is the way of salvation, amen. How do we build on that, on that salvation, amen, on the blessings of salvation? We build on it through relationship and in prayer this morning. Come on, amen. There is no other way, church. Come on, amen. Uh, Pastor Alfonso, amen, when he did the Bible study in my house, he closed it on talking about prayer. I'm thinking, right on, brother. Come on, amen. I almost wanted to throw some stuff out there, but I didn't want to give him all my message. Come on this morning, Amen. Uh, 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 how many know we build it on prayer? We build it on our knees. We build it by calling upon the name of Jesus. Come on, amen. By allowing the Holy Spirit, amen, to stir us and to build it, to excite us, if you must, amen, with the joy of the Lord to be our strength, to hold a banner up high and say, Jesus, come on, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, amen. We're, we should be alive in the things of God, church. You want to be fruitful? How many of you want to be fruitful here this morning? Come on, how many of you want to be fruitful? How many want your vines to be full, amen, of luscious big grapes this morning? Come on, amen. And I'm not talking so you can squish them like Lucy and make wine. Come on this morning. The good fruit. Mm. How many know, amen, by being in prayer, by being close to God, is it keeps our visions and our purposes and our callings alive and real in our lives. Come on, amen. The things that are taking place now, how God is using your life, and the things that God has for you and I this morning. The visions of Christ in your life. How many have a vision and a purpose, amen, a, a calling in your life for Christ here this morning? Come on, amen. How many have that? How many is it a, a burning desire? Jeremiah said the word of God, amen. Meaning the word of God, the vision, what God was giving him was, was, was shut up in his bones. It was like a fire willing to bust loose. Come on this morning, amen. There has to be that, that, that fire, amen, that, that comes in a, through relationship, through the power of prayer in a building in the presence of God. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. This is how the Passion Bible. It says, yes, I will gift you if you seek and you'll discover knock in the, knock in the door will be open for you. For every persistent one will get what he asks for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for. And everyone who knocks persistently for one day will find an open door. Come on this morning. Amen. You want to get rid of the little foxes in your life? Stay close to Jesus. Amen. Stay close to Jesus. He says, amen, if you draw nay to me, I'm right here. Come on, amen. You don't got to look for God. He's right here this morning. Amen. He's right in your life. He's right in your home. He's right in your car this morning. He has to be right in our minds and right in our spirits this morning. Because God is a good God, amen. Those who persistently knock will one day find an open door, amen. You'll live in that vision, in that purpose, in that calling, amen. You'll have the love of God just, just shining through your life, amen. Every night when I pray for my daughter, amen, and I, and I hold her, amen, and part of that prayer is God let her be that witness to her generation that you called her to be. Let your love flow out of her, Lord, wherever you take her, wherever she goes. God, let her be that witness, amen. How I many know that has to be our heart's desires? Prayer, church, is the believer's passport into the spiritual realm in the presence of God. You want the little foxes, amen, to stop, amen, eating at your fruitfulness? Jesus said, follow me. Take up your cross, amen. 
What does that mean? Amen. We walk in a willingness of obedience. Paul, amen. He had that encounter with God. He recognized God, amen. And what is, I believe it's the book of Galatians. He says, amen, that he is a willing bondservant of Christ. Willing to be obedient to the things of God. Joyfully in his heart, even in the shipwrecks of his life. Come on, amen. He endeavored and endured because he was following after Jesus. Jesus, amen, came to this earth, as the scripture says, full of grace and truth. Amen. Grace and truth. And I close, amen, with Hebrews 4.16 this morning, amen, as the worship team would make its way up here, amen. It says this in Hebrews 4.16. So let us come boldly. Come on, amen. Not wimpy. Come on, amen. You could come broken, but don't come wimpy. Amen. Come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. So I love the word of God, amen. It's so clear and so easy. You don't need to be a great theologian, amen. You don't have to have a crazy outstanding uh, IQ. All you have to do is be willing to be open and to allow the Holy Spirit to minister into your hearts this morning, amen. That God loves you, amen. And God wants you and I to recognize the little foxes, the little things that mess with, mess us up, that keep us, amen, from serving God this morning. Can we give the Lord a clap offering, amen? You want to stand to your feet with me this morning, amen? The little things, the little things. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, again, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find it. Knock. And the door will be open to you. The one who asks will always receive. And the one who's searching will always find. And the door is open to the man who knocks. To the man or woman who knocks in prayer. Who believes and trusts God. Come on this morning. Amen. The man and woman of God that are willing to say, Lord, I'm tired of carrying around these rocks. They're heavy, Lord. They're building up. It was only one. Now I got a pocket full on the right side and on the left side. Help me, Jesus. All the little indecisions that we make without consulting our Lord and Savior. It's the little rocks that keep our families from, from living and moving in the power of God. It's, a, it's the rocks that keeps the, the ugliness in our homes at times in our lives. Amen. It's the rocks that keep us from being, amen, and having a testimony that, that we could be the light of the world and that we're drawing the lost and the hurt and the broken, amen, so that we can minister to them the grace and the mercy and the love of God. Come on, church. It's the rocks that keeps you from being fruitful, them little foxes, amen. They look at you and they have a cute little whispery face, amen, but they want to eat your fruit. Come on, amen. They want to devour the vine. We need to recognize them in our lives. We need to acknowledge them in our lives. We need to confess them in our lives. And we need to leave them at the altar this morning, church. Because God is a good God. He's our Father and He always wants to bless. He always wants to anoint. anoint. That's His desire, amen. To pour out in our lives the goodness of His grace and mercy and love, church. Because God's a good God. He's a good, good Father. This morning, amen, you might be here and you might not truly understand the word as it goes forth because you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've never acknowledged him in your life because the Bible tells us this, that we could hear the word of God, but you can't discern it or you can't know it, you can't understand it unless you're a child of God. It's just like what the promise in prayer God says he hears all prayers, but the promise of prayer are only to his children. Come on, amen. It's scriptural. It's, word, it's in the Bible. Read it. So if you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never accepted him into your life. And you want ask, to ask God into your life, to ask him to forgive you of your sins and to help you, amen. Start on a new path in your life, amen. Right where you're at, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Any at all here this morning that don't know Christ and have never made that decision, Because God wants to change your life, amen. God created you, amen. God put you on this earth for a reason, amen. God wants to wrap you in his love. If you're here this morning, amen, you don't know Christ, just raise your hand. Any at all, any at all that don't know Jesus. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. I won't believe that we're all saved, sanctified. We have our, our ticket to, on the highway to heaven. Amen. So I want to change the order of this service. Amen. And I want to talk to the church. So the Spirit of God wants to talk to the church this morning. Maybe you have some little rocks. Amen. Maybe you went to the pet store and you bought a little fox. And now it's gnawing away at your fruitfulness in your life at the vine. So I want to open up this altar for you this morning. Amen. For those that want to come and just leave it here, amen. Just leave it here and leave here this morning, amen, in a different mindset with your heart in a different spot, amen. These altars are open this morning, amen. If you desire prayer, I love to stand in the gap and pray with you and to believe God, amen, that God wants to move in your life and your hearts, amen. So that's you this morning, amen. These altars are open, amen. Don't, don't, don't leave the same way you know, amen. You know if you're not walking in the joy of the Lord. If you're struggling and you're not walking in the joy of the Lord, amen. If you feel that strength, that's what the altar's for, amen. No one's going to judge you, amen. God cries that we would come to the altar, that we would leave it at the altar, that we would allow him to minister into our lives this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.